Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is the Ultimate Unity Tutorial for Beginners and welcome to episode 18. In this tutorial we are going to add in a text box, we're going to modify our what we have as a basic quest for now, so we're going to stop ourselves going further until we have a weapon, and we'll also look at bringing in an enemy towards the end of this tutorial. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, Click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on my channel. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So before we do anything else, there is something that I want to quickly address. Uh, I spotted it at the end of last tutorial. Uh, we currently have a little bit of a glitch when it comes to the axe. And this has only uh, appeared since we've done our post-processing. So it appears normally, but if we start running, you may get a little there we go so we've got a duplicate of the axe there you can see just looks a little bit strange so to get rid of that what we'll need to do is head to our first person controller go to the first person character and over here in the camera component on culling mask we need to change everything and untick weapons so the reason that weird kind of um glitch is occurring is because technically we have two cameras rendering this axe. One with post-processing and one without. And now as we've removed it, it doesn't make that weird glitch. So on that note as well, we will be coming to our axe again um, fairly soon because we're gonna, how can I say, just add a little bit of animation to it to make it seem a little bit more realistic when we're stood still and when we're walking. But that's something we'll get to when we get towards uh, enemies, that kind of thing. So, uh, next on our agenda for this tutorial is a text box. So I'm gonna go over to our cat warrior over here. And if we recall, this guy speaks to us and we have text at the bottom of the screen. Now, it's up to you if you want to have a text box. I guess it just depends what kind of um, game you're creating. Uh, but I'm gonna go to my text folder and I'm gonna bring in this texture that you can get on the website for free. Head over there, downloads and assets. And then you can get this under the uh, how to make a game for free ultimate tutorial, tutorial number 18. So much like we have done with our canvas, we have a couple of things on there. Uh, the subtitle text obviously is where the subtitles are held. So this is now going to go inside an image that will appear on our screen. So to do that, we need to go to game object and go to UI and let's go to a raw image right there. I'm going to quickly type in some text, so just random letters, so we can get a sense of, you know, pretty much where the text is going to be. Uh, so let's double click, take a look, and I'm going to pan the camera around so we can see our canvas correctly. And now all we need to do is align our um, text box in the right place. So let's drag and drop the text box texture onto this raw image. Drag and drop. And now let's adjust it to be the size we would want the text box to be when it appears. So let's start by anchoring down here, center at the bottom. And in fact, I think we'll do at the bottom and stretch just in case. Uh, so that's set. So now we want to have uh, the position in the center. So let's have initial center right there. And let's stretch it out just a bit, probably to about there realign it center and bring it up just a little bit more. So that will be roughly the position of where our text box is going to be. So now what we need to do is drag this raw image above the subtitle text. What this will do is make the subtitle text more um, towards the front in the ordering on this canvas. So I can't, I can't remember if I've said this um, in a previous tutorial, but the ordering is important in the canvas. Whatever is lower in the canvas is at the front. Whatever is higher is towards the back. So this subtitle text now, let's change this to match the actual, there we go. Okay, so we're matching the actual text area itself, but we should probably bring it in just a little more, probably to about there. And I'm also going to stretch this text and change the anchoring position to there and just expand it a little bit more up to probably there, down to probably about there. And I think I'll probably change it to black. 
so we can actually see the text in the text box. Um, I'll also align it to the left, maybe increase the font size to 24, and we'll see how that now looks. So this raw image is going to be uh, renamed to text box. Uh, in fact, we'll have that as subtitle, subtitle text box. So now what we need to do is we need to modify the script where our cat warrior talks to us. So if we go to our cat warrior and go to the conversation object, we need to go into NPC chat. So obviously in here, we've got to add in that extra variable, which is going to be the text box itself. So what we need to do is go to the top and underneath subtext, we'll have public game object. And we'll have this called sub box semicolon. And next thing we'll do is we need to enable that uh, object right before we enable the text right here. So sub box dot set active and in brackets true semicolon. And the same needs to be done for the one after the dialogue state. So if we have taken the ax and we say something else, let's have this also appear. So sub box dot set active true semicolon. Uh, before we go any further, I am going to modify what our guy says as well. So I see you have your ex. I have a small favor to ask of you. Please can you eliminate the skeleton threat just outside this village? So obviously that's going to be what we have to do next. So he's kind of given us a bit more information. And obviously the last thing to do in this script is to turn off that text box when we reset the chat. So in our code routine down here, reset chat, before we change the uh, text to blank, we just need to go sub box dot set active and in brackets false semicolon and save. So let's head back to Unity. And it should appear here when it's compiled. There we go. So let's add that subtitle text box over here. I'm now going to disable it, turn it off and set the subtitle text back to blank. And let's save our scene and let's test this out. So obviously we know the dialogue state works. So let's pick up that ax and let's head over to our guy and we'll speak to him. There he is. There we go. So there's our text box. Excellent. Um, so I think I might actually reduce the size of the uh, subtitle text. Maybe I will have it back to 20 as we originally had it. So next thing I want to do is I want to prevent our character from going any further into the game before we have the axe and before we've spoken to our uh, dude, our cat warrior. So if we go back down here and what we'll need to do is I'm going to set up an invisible wall. And this invisible wall will obviously disappear once we have what we need. So to do that, game object, 3D object, cube. And let's select our move tool and get it into position round about here. Yeah, that should do it, I think. In fact, what I might do is make it a little bit of a bottleneck so we don't have to deal with too much uh, room. So in order to make a bottleneck, I'm just going to add in a couple more trees just here. Uh, brush size, let's reduce that quite a lot. So let's have, in fact, that looks a little bit silly. They need to be taller than that, don't they? So we'll have that about there. Okay, that looks a little bit better. And let's have the trees there, there. So our bottleneck is going to be just here. So let's take that cube right there and place it 
just here somewhere. And you guys should know about invisible walls. A lot of games have invisible walls. They're actually a lot more useful than you would realize. So let's increase uh, the Z to stop ourselves going anywhere. And let's increase it on the Y as well. So now we won't be able to go through here. But it would seem a bit weird for us to just suddenly kind of try going this way and stop. So to do that, I'm going to add in an extra cube right at the front, which is going to be a bit of a uh, trigger. So let, firstly, let's right click and rename and call this area block. And then I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate, bring that area block forward and reduce the size once again. So we're about, uh, we don't need it to be too big. So let's have that as probably about 12 there. So it's just kind of in front of our blocker. And let's click is trigger on the box collider right there. And I'll put this as area block note. So I'm gonna have this script in village one because this is technically part of village one. So right click, create C sharp script. Let's have this as block note. So let's open that up in Visual Studio. Eventually, Unity's thinking about that. And realistically, we don't have to do too much. There are basically one or two things that we have to kind of keep in mind. We have to remember that although we're going to change some UI in this case, it's not going to be our subtitles. So on that note, let's actually create a new um, UI. So UI down here, text, and let's have that text dead center, which so that's fine as it is. And we're going to have it as white. And I'm actually going to say, you cannot go that way. And double click. So it'll say that in the middle of the screen when we want it to. So it should say you cannot go that way. Obviously you can have it bigger if you want to, it's entirely up to you. Uh, so I'm gonna rename that to block text. And now on that area block note, we need to set that as coming on the screen whenever we go into this trigger. So let's go to our script. And let's get rid of void start, void update, and the annotations because we don't need them. We do need, uh, in fact, no, we don't need any namespace because we're going to do this via an object. So public uh, game object, and we'll just call this block note, semicolon, and void on trigger enter. And we can get rid of private because it doesn't need to be private. And what we'll do is we'll have block note dot set active true. So when we go into it, we'll set it on. So obviously we need to do the inverse of that. So it's void on trigger exit. And again, that doesn't need to be private, so we can get rid of that. And it'll be block note dot set active false, semicolon, and save. So obviously it disappears off our screen when we walk away from that invisible wall. So let's head back into Unity and let's add that block note onto the area block note right there. So the long, small one that we've created goes onto there. Make sure it is the right one because it should have is trigger. And then drag and drop block text onto there and then turn off block text up here. The last thing we need to do is take these two objects and turn off the mesh renderer. So now it doesn't look any different. So save the scene, press play, and let's just make sure our invisible wall preventing us from doing anything actually works. So I think I'm gonna have some grass on here pretty soon. So we should be able to say, you cannot go that way, there we go. So it's telling us that we cannot go that way. So let's walk away, and there we go, it's gone off. So 
you might need to work on that just a little bit. It's up to you, refine it, do what you need to do, maybe make it a little bit bigger, but it will stop us going that way just for now. So the last thing, absolute last thing we're going to do in this is we're going to quickly bring in an enemy because I want to prepare for the next tutorial because the next one, I don't want dragging on too long. Um, so we're going to kind of make those preparations now. Now, if we go to the asset store, uh, I am actually on the old asset store. And I am going to search for enemy. In fact, no, I'm just going to search for skeleton. Because that is what we're aiming for. And obviously we want free only. And I have already chosen an asset that uh, I would like to use. And it is this one right here. So if you want to use this one, you can. If not, you can use any other one because the general mechanics is going to be the same. So you don't need to worry about that at all. All you need to do is click import or download and it will bring it into your scene. And I already have it just here, fantasy monster skeleton. I have him here ready to go for the next tutorial. So next tutorial, we're going to be dealing with this guy right here. Uh, we're going to place him in our scene. We're going to do a couple of things with him, work on him, see what he can do, see what he can't do. And we're also going to get this whole um, quest, I'm going to call it, going. So when we've spoken to our cat warrior, these two blockers disappear. And then we can get to our enemy, which is going to be over here somewhere. So until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.